Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode in our decor style guide and DIYs. I'm gonna have to come up with a really cool name for this series, but basically it's where we explore different decor styles, what they're all about, how to incorporate them into your home if you like that style, and then also we do DIYs in that style. A few weeks ago we did Scandinavian, we've done mid-century modern, and lots and lots of bohemian. So with these style guides, they're just meant as a starting off point, something to get you interested in a new style or more familiar with the style. There can also be so many renditions of these styles and how these styles can evolve into other styles give you an initial guide on how to incorporate some of the traditional elements of a style and of course put your own spin on it so that your home feels uniquely you and more like home. So I asked you guys over on Instagram and in the last video what style you would like to see next and largely it was industrial design. So today we're going to be doing a guide to the industrial style and then a few really cool DIYs that I have planned so I'm super excited. So industrial decor I love actually. I don't necessarily have an industrial style home, but I do incorporate industrial style decor into my kind of bohemian Scandinavian vibe. Let's get into what industrial decor actually is. So the vibe for industrial decor is definitely moody, very warm feeling, and also very open and spacious. It usually has a very open floor plan because most of the industrial design elements and inspiration comes from warehouses, lofts, factories that have been transformed into living spaces where all of the rooms are just designated by furniture rather than walls. Okay, so next let's get into materials and elements that make up an industrial space. There's lots of exposed elements. In this room, all of the workings of the house and how it's built has been covered up with drywall and then painted, so it looks really polished. In industrial design, you see all of that, all of the workings of how the space is actually built, exposed beams and all of the pipes and the air condition ducts so that actually becomes part of the decor and it's all open so think open floor plan open walls even open shelving so when in doubt don't cover it up showcase it make it pretty and just expose it lots of metal and steel so think black metal lots of warm toned woods concrete flooring concrete walls concrete details also stainless steel you could see it in countertops and kitchens brick walls are also things that you can see in these types of homes because that's true to the warehouse factory kind of vibe and I even really like plaster walls in this type of design because it adds a little bit of texture. It looks similar to a concrete-esque type of look, but it's not polished, it's a little more rough. So you may be thinking like, I don't live in a loft or a warehouse or a factory, or I've already built my house or I'm renting. Like I can't have those exposed elements. You could totally fake these elements in your house if it's a look that you want without actually having the workings of the actual space. Like with brick walls, you can use 3D wallpaper, removable wallpaper if you're renting to give you that look. Faux beams could also be added to the ceilings in your living room space or dining room or anywhere in your house. They're also lighter and less expensive than true wooden beams. For a concrete look, you could use vinyl flooring that's like stick down that you could just peel up when you move out of a rental property and even pipes. Like if you really like that pipe and duck work look, you could totally put those in as non-functioning, but for stylistic purposes. Also another material that you're gonna see a lot are leathers. Really rich tone leathers, you'll see this a lot in furniture that you're gonna bring into the space. Leather is definitely an option. So now for color palette. At its base and foundation, you want a very neutral color palette. So think black, white, and gray. And then to eliminate the starkness of those colors together, you can vary the shade and also the texture of those colors. This is gonna create a more calming environment and then the colors are gonna have a little more variety. And just because your foundation colors are very neutral, that doesn't mean no color. You can bring in vibrant colored art and even warm earthy tones in the fabrics that you're gonna incorporate into the space. I would just suggest keeping the foundation or the majority of the room in a very neutral kind of mix of textures and shades. So next up is furniture. So you're gonna see lots of vintage furniture styles in this space, obviously from the warehouse kind of vibe, you're gonna see old, worn in, maybe even secondhand furniture that just has great lines 
is in great shape. And obviously if you don't live in a loft or a warehouse space, furniture is also a great way to incorporate those types of elements and bring that industrial design to life. Pipes on shelving units that you incorporate or warm wood and metal decor pieces. So now for windows and window treatment. So if we've learned anything from my living room makeover, the power a window can have for a space, black framed or trimmed windows are definitely the way to go. If you have the ability to pick your windows, I would definitely suggest going for large loft style windows that are floor to ceiling or at least all the way down to the floor. So where privacy is necessary and you wanna incorporate some window treatments, I would definitely go for either a relaxed Roman shade, which is a really cool look, or curtains that hang almost all the way to the ceiling and then kind of puddle on the floor around the window is a super cool kind of look too. As for lighting in an industrial space, metal lighting or even reclaimed lighting that's from a warehouse or a factory, lamps with really wide shades that kind of add to the drama, multi-directional lighting too, like floor lamps that have multiple bulb heads on it that are multi-directional. And I would definitely suggest a warmer light bulb, a warmer light. So think Edison bulbs are great in this space as well. For flooring, either polished concrete or a really just rich, warm wood. And finally for accents and art, I love this style so much because it incorporates my love for thrifting and finding things secondhand. So think shopping at like flea markets and antique markets where you're gonna find those kind of like worn in factory elements to incorporate into your space in lighting, in wall art, in shelf decor. Industrial style can lend a little on the minimal side. So definitely keep it minimal. Don't over clutter your home with different knickknacks. Just keep it really simple, really clean with a few really interesting pieces that you found secondhand. It also totally doesn't have to be that literal. You don't have to have an old clock working in your house. You can definitely go for a more polished industrial look and you can just incorporate wood and metal. <laughs> So I like to give you guys kind of a item shopping list for each of these styles. So here are the pieces that you can search for, that look for, and the items that can complete an industrial decor home. Okay, so I have three really cool DIYs that I wanna work on, so let's get started. For our first DIY, we're gonna be incorporating wood and pipe to create a DIY pipe candle holder. So you're gonna need a cutting board or a block of wood. I really like this cutting board from Ikea. You're gonna need three quarter inch iron floor flanges. Also three quarter inch iron pipes and in varied heights. So I used anywhere between two and a half inches high to six inches. This is optional, but I think it adds a finishing touch. Three quarter inch iron couplings, some flat black spray paint, three quarter inch wood screws, and just some taper candles in whatever color you like. The piece of wood is obviously gonna be the base of our candle holder and what we're gonna be putting the pipes on. So I wanted to assemble all of the pipe joints together. So I took the floor flanges, all of the piping, and also the couplings and just screwed them all together. I wanted it to be kind of varied in height. That's why I went with different pipe heights. And you'll see when we arrange these on the board how it kind of adds some interest and height to this piece. I wanted to start by arranging them how I wanted them on the piece of wood, whether I wanted them separated or touching, and I actually did like them touching better. And then I took them outside and spray painted them with some flat black spray paint. This is also optional. Sometimes there's writing on these pipes. It just gives it a little bit more of a polished touch. Once they were dry, I arranged them onto our wood again, and I wanted to mark exactly where the holes were. And I just used a felt tip marker to mark where all of the holes in each of the floor flanges were, and then used a drill bit to drill pilot holes to get rid of some of the wood inside. Next, I just repositioned the flange onto the cutting board and screwed them in using the three quarter inch wood screws. I didn't want the screw color to be contrast, so just using the same paint that we used to paint these, I just sprayed some in the cap and painted all of the little screw heads so that everything looked really finished and all the same color. All 
Our next DIY, I have been dying for the viral TikTok mirror, but in a size that actually is a little more conducive to a smaller home. So we're gonna be making it in a floor length size. So what you're gonna need are 18 square mirrors. You can get these at Ikea, obviously, also the dollar store, or I'll link some on Amazon. Also gonna be using a heavier duty glue to this. You're gonna need some three quarter inch trim, a large piece of plywood, and then the color that you wanna paint your mirror. I went for a thicker inch plywood because I really wanted this mirror to be substantial, but I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to bow at all when it's standing upright. So I just screwed in some scrap wood that I had laying around for extra support. Next, it was time to cut all of the trim pieces and here are all of the wood cuts that you actually need to do this project. I am doing it a little different than the TikTok version. I'm actually covering the mirror ends. So we're doing it a little bit backwards, but hopefully a little more of a finished look. So since we're doing it a little backwards, I needed to paint my trim first and applying it to the plywood. So I just used my favorite bin primer for that I use for all of my projects and primed all of the pieces of trim. Next, I went back with my tricorn black paint that I used in my living room and gave it three coats. It definitely needed three coats. And this black paint is in a satin finish. I always like to reuse paints or materials that I have around the house just to keep costs down and I already have it. Why not use it? While I was drying outside, measured and marked half an inch in around the entire piece of plywood. There's gonna be a half an inch spacing between all of these mirrors, including the sides. I wanted to mark a half an inch around the sides to give me a guide to putting the mirrors down. If you get the mirrors from Ikea, they come with these two sticky adhesives that you can put on the back, which are actually, I found very strong. For extra support, I'm actually gonna be using this Gorilla construction adhesive around three of the sides to just add more support. And then using my half inch marks as a guide, I'm gonna start with putting the mirrors in each of the corners and then coming back in in the center and applying the rest of the mirrors kind of evenly distributed. No dogs were harmed during the making of this mirror. Kinsley was definitely trying to help today. I eventually had to put her in another room to take a nap. You can see once you get the corners in, it's a little easier to evenly distribute your mirrors too. And you just do this to the whole thing. So this is kind of what it looks like once all of the mirrors are down. And then we're gonna go back with the trim on top. So now it's time to just put the black trim, all of it's dry. So it's just time to put it on top. Definitely an easier DIY to not do what I'm doing. <laughs> I want the edges of the mirrors to be covered and it's actually creating a space along the side. I was like, what do I have that's the same width of the mirror, you know? And I have these little wooden sticks. It is an easier DIY if you just separate them out three quarters of an inch so that the wood fits flat and you don't cover the edges of the mirror. So I'm actually kind of gonna recommend you guys do that. These small pieces of wood are gonna act as a spacer to raise up and elevate the sides so that the new trim can actually stick on top. And I just needed it on the side. So using some wood glue right on top of all of those spacers and a little bit on the mirror I just placed the trim right on top and use some painters tape to keep it in place and keep it pressured down So that the glue could dry you can also use some nails. I am a stickler for details So I went back over the entire border and even on the insides With some caulking and then painted the entire framing black even though my method did give lightly Maybe a cleaner look to it. I don't think it was worth all of the trouble so I'm definitely gonna link the Sorry Girls video. They did an amazing one for their loft series. So as well as the viral TikTok. For our next DIY, I'm gonna be doing a leather poof because leather is so popular in industrial design. So what you're gonna need is two yards of vegan leather and also some foam or stuffing. I was on a mission to find really pretty vegan leather that kind of looked a little more worn in, but I was having a really difficult time. So I kind of pulled out the ones that I somewhat liked. They were all okay, but I think that this one had a little bit of distressing on it. I didn't like that it was slick, but I think once it's worn in, it might look a little better. So first we need to cut all of our pieces. So I started by cutting six pieces square at 21 by 21. Then you'll see later that I realized it was a little too tall. So I ended up cutting it down to 17. 
So once you have all six of your pieces, they'll look a little bit like this. And instead of the traditional sewing where we're hiding the seams, where we put the pretty sides together and then sew a seam, we're actually gonna have an exposed seam on this poof. So we're gonna do ugly sides together and then stitch it down a half an inch. So vinyl is a little tricky. You have to kind of help it through the sewing machine because it's a little slick and the sewing machine can't grab it. I started by sewing the sides first. So you kind of have a tube of four sides. And then here's where I realized it definitely was too tall, so I cut it down to 17 inches. When you're sewing all of these pieces together, make sure you're leaving a half an inch at the top and the bottom of your seam. This will help you when you're sewing the top and the bottom. So I just matched up the corners and did the same thing. Sewed all the way around the four sides of the top and then sewed only three of the sides of the bottom because we're gonna have to go back in and put the foam in and then sew it closed by hand. Okay, so there is where we can stick our foam in and then I'll clean up all of the strings and such. Next, I needed to cut the foam to size. So I needed it 21 inches square and you can use any type of foam, beanbag foam, thrifted pillows. And then I started adding them in to see how many pieces I was actually going to need for 16 inches high at a finished poof. I needed six pieces of this foam because they're two inches tall and I found that bending them helped me get it in there a little better. We just have one open edge, hand sew it up, and we're done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a better idea of what industrial decor actually is and how if you love it, you can incorporate it into your own home. I'll also be sharing some of my favorite industrial inspired decor pieces over on Instagram this week. So definitely follow me over on Instagram at McKenna Lee if you don't already. Definitely let me know in the comments what style you would like to see next. And don't forget to check out Scandinavian, Mid-Century Modern and Bohemian already on my channel. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, definitely hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification. I have so much in the works right now. I'm so excited to share them with you guys. And we will see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Say hi to everybody. Or are you just running around barking? Oh my god, you're so cute.